Uh, how did you go into the preparation for the season after, you know, mentally just kind of trying to take this day by day, you know, you you lose your October start. You don't know when you're going to start. You finally get a date in November. You work in small groups, you work in big groups mentally. How do you, how do you kind of package all that? I think you just keep going, right? I mean, nobody knows what's going to, what's going to happen. So you just kind of have to take, take, to take what comes. And I think as a team, we, we've just been doing a great job of, uh, handling that and pushing ourselves every day. Uh, Mick Hatton with the rink live. Hey Spencer, uh, you know, when, when you, each team is, is a little bit different, uh, even though you guys have a number of people, you know, coming back this season, what, what are, you know, maybe some different characteristics you, you maybe think of, of, of this team uh, when, when you look at it, you know, what are, what are things that are striking you here in the early going? You know, I think our team, uh, we talk, we, we talk about it a lot as we're, uh, we're a fast team. You know, we can get up and down the sheet really fast. And, you know, as a defenseman personally, that's, that's fun to have, right? You can break out the puck and your forwards are going out the rink. So I, I, I would say the main thing you see when you watch our team is our uh, speed. Questions for Spencer. Austin with the NCHC. Yeah, hi Spencer. We got a couple of fan questions from our uh, Instagram story. So, how is uh, how's the team handling practices with COVID? Uh, good. We have two pods. Um, we have to stay in those set, separate pods until we get onto the ice. And uh, like I said before, we're taking each day and uh, tr trying to get better each each day. And uh, it's been fun too, right? We've had, we've had different, uh, game days and, uh, skill days too. So we've been, uh, we, we've been trying to switch things up as well and, uh, just keep going forward. Thanks Spencer. Uh, Greg Cameron, college hockey news. Who's a freshman that's looked really good in practice so far and who's a returner that, uh, maybe we might not expect to, uh, but is going to make a big leap this year. You know, that's a good question. I mean, we have four freshmen uh, that have stepped in and done an amazing job. And, uh, you know, I would say they're all, they're all IO openers too, right? You, what you watch them in practice and one day one guy's like, holy cow. And then the, net, the next day you got a different one going. And, uh, you know, we, we just got VT uh, Mietinen, I believe that's how you say his last name. It's a tough name to pronounce, but uh from Finland, he finally got his visa cleared, and he's looked great. And uh, like I said, they they have all looked good. And uh, I think someone that's your that'll be surprising. It's um, you know I think Thomas Rocco, number seventeen. He's got a ton of speed, and I I think we're gonna he he's gonna make an impact this year for sure. Sorry, uh, Mick, back to you. Spencer, uh, you know, Dave Shayak has kind of taken over working with the defense. Uh, just talk a, a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe maybe some differences or, or some things that he's kind of emphasized here in the early going for you guys. Yeah, he's been great so far. Um, I think the main thing is he's just he he's a teacher, right? He he wants to teach us every day and guide us to become bad to become bad or each day. And I think the main thing he 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 tries to teach is, um, you know, we, he, he gave us uh, sheets at, at, at the beginning of the year and his, his main points were work ethic and give it all you got. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So as, as long as you bring those two, two things, then we'll be good. Thanks Spencer. Uh, Alex Heinert, Midco Sports Network. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Spencer, you mentioned a bit ago, you've broken up sort of into two pods when you've been on campus and then come together on the ice. How have you guys been able to bond as a team, even though maybe you haven't been able to do the normal all together group team building activities this off season and then the build up to the start of play in two weeks? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it has been different, but um, I think we've just all 
you know, been tight, you know, whether it's at, in the locker room, just hanging out or, you know, we're at, at our house. Uh, we started a Netflix series, all, all of us guys called Ozarks. And we all watch that. And uh, you just find different ways, right? You know, it's a weird time and uh, you have to socially distance, but you find different ways to do it. And it's kind of unique, right? And, and it's going to be an experience that we'll all uh, remember for the rest of our lives, for sure. Just to follow up to that, who picked Ozarks as the show you guys were going to watch? How did you decide? Uh, it was not me. I, I, <laughs> I did not know any, anything about it. And uh, the guys heard good things. So that's what we did. Uh, I think, I think a main, a main supporter of Ozarks was, uh, walks Nolan, Nolan Walker. So that's, that's his credit. Good choice. Uh, Brandy Johnson with the star tribune. Yeah. Hi Spencer. Uh, your team had a, a very good, uh, February last year. How much can you build off that momentum for this year? Oh, it's huge. I mean, we were we were really looking forward to that se that se that series in Western Michigan until it got canceled. Uh, but we can build off that, right? Because we we left off on such a good note, and we're we're just excited to get to get back there and to just carry carry on our uh, momentum. And a follow up: uh, What what can uh, people expect uh, out of you from from the le a leadership role this year? I'm, I'm just going to play in my game, right? You are, you're, you're selected a leader for a reason. So you, you just don't change, right? You want to be, you want to be yourself. And I'm, I'm going to go out there and work my butt off each, each day and just lead and lead by, lead by example. Thank you. I like that. Uh, back to Nick at the rink live. Spencer, uh, what are some key things for, for you guys to be successful this season? You know, when, when you just look big picture at, at your team, what are, are going to be some keys? I think our, we are going to have to win win the details, right? Um, each team is going to have systems. E each team is going to have, uh, you know, their their work ethic and stuff like that. So we have to be detailed enough to beat those guys and men and, and mentally strong to do the stuff on and off, off the ice to get to get us over the edge of those other teams. And like I said, we're we're we're, we're a fast team, and we're going to have to use that to our advantage and. Uh, you know, it all starts in the D zone, right? So a clean D, a clean D zone leads to uh, go, going to play in the fine zone. Thanks, Spencer. Uh, other questions for Spencer? Well, if I can, uh, you guys were picked fourth in, 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 the, in the preseason poll. Uh, that would put you guys, give you guys some, some home ice. Uh, what are your, your expectations, I guess, for, for this team, for this season? And, uh, you know, just kind of give us a, an outlook a little bit along those lines. I mean, obviously in our minds, you know, we see that poll and it's like, you know, all right, well, we want to be one, right? So our, our goal is to work our, our tails off each day and, you know, I think one of, one of my favorite quotes is each day somebody's getting passed and somebody's passing somebody and we want to be that team that's going to pass the other teams each day. So I think our, our goal as a team, we want to be number one at the end of the year. Thanks, Spencer. Uh, Greg, back to you. Is it going to be a little weird not playing on your home ice on the big ice for the first month of the season? And how is, what's the way you can combat that? Yeah, that's the adversity thing we were talking about. Right. And um, every team's going to have to do it. Right. No, no team is going to play on their home ice. I know Omaha, it's their home, their home rink, but it's still not going to feel, you know, like a home game. There's no fans and, yeah, we have the big sheet and we, and we practice on that, but we've had to adapt the last few years too to some smaller sheets when we go to North Dakota or some of those teams. So, um, you know, we're going to get in there and we'll have a few practices, I think, before we start and uh, we'll just go from there. I mean, each team is going to have the same ice, or, ice or surface, sorry, and um, we are just should go in, in, in there and do, do, do what we can. Alex, back to you, Mitko. 
Yeah, Spencer, you mentioned your leadership style of leading by example. Uh, can you talk through when the last time was that you were a captain kind of growing up? And then what so what was some advice maybe that either Jack or Sean last year or some of the, your teammates maybe gave you on how to handle the, the C this year? Yeah, so the last time I think I was captain was uh, my junior and senior year of high school for my hockey team there in, in Sartell. Um, but I've been saying this to everyone, Jack and Sean and Jimmy Schultz have been two of my you know, mentors and all they keep saying is, you know, be just, you just have to be yourself. You know, you're, there's a reason you're the cat, you're the captain and just, you just have to be yourself. Thanks Spencer. Other questions for the captain? Going once, going twice. All right, Spencer, thanks very much for the time. Uh, Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in Omaha in about a week. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Spencer. Spencer. All right. And with that, we will uh, turn our attention to Coach Brett Larson. Uh, Coach, I've kind of left it open to other coaches if you want to make any sort of opening statement, or we can go right into questions. If you don't want to make an opening statement, I'll leave it up to you. I'll leave it up to the pros, let you guys ask the questions. All um, right. Be prepared. Fair enough. Uh, with that, we will open up questions for Coach Larson to the media. Uh, Mick, rink live. Yeah, yeah, Brett. Uh, you know, same thing. I guess I kind of asked Spencer. You know, when you look at your team, uh, you know, with the the people that you got coming back, kind of what you've seen in the early going. What what are some key elements? I guess you, you know, for you guys to be successful, are, are there a few things? I guess that are going to you know, be big for you guys? Yeah, I think Spencer nailed it on the head. Um, we need to be a team that breaks out fast, transition fast, four checks fast. We have a, a ton of team speed up front. Um, if we get on the rush and attack teams, if we get low and we get a lot of movement, I think we can make it hard on teams that way. Obviously, uh, we're going to be playing against, you know, the best teams in the country who defend well, and we can't allow ourselves to get pinned into the corner and some of those things. But we think when we can use our speed, our low movement, our cutbacks, our ability to get underneath checks, uh, our forwards are, are pretty skilled and pretty quick. And uh, if we're moving and, and on our toes, I think we can be pretty good. If, if we're uh, slugging it around out there, it's, it's gonna be tough in this league. Thanks coach. Uh, Drew Steele. Oh yeah, coach, uh, 10 games, 20 days, obviously not the normal schedule. Uh, What's the goaltending situation going to look like? Have you ran through that in your head with, is it going to be a lot more of, is David going to go all 10 or is it going to be more of a rotation between the three? Well, you know, when you start about talk, talking about start the season, right? And and strengths and Mick just asked me the question. I went right to our team speed and our, our uh, ability to play fast. But if David Rennick can build off the second half he had last year, I thought his consistent with three level just got better and better as the year went on. Obviously the team was really growing as well, but, you know, we played uh, Denver, uh, or sorry, North Dakota, Denver, and Duluth, three of the top five teams in the country in the second half of the year. And and I thought David played some of his best hockey. And uh, so, to be honest, my plan is to, to start David. Hopefully, he uh, can pick up where he left off. He's looked real sharp here in the fall. Um, but definitely spot those other guys in here or there to give David a little bit of rest. And it also gives a, a, ourselves a chance to develop those guys a little bit in case they were needed due to injury or uh, you know, obviously, and if David didn't pull his weight, but uh, uh, my plan would be play David as much as I can without <laughs> playing him into the ground where he can't perform, finding a couple games here or there where uh, where he can take a rest. The other goalies can get in and hopefully stay sharp and uh, allow him to come back even stronger. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Greg Cameron, College Hockey News. Coach, it's been a rough little period in terms of case counts in the Midwest. How have you guys handled uh, the virus spreading through your team, if it has at all? And uh, what can you glean from the women's team in that aspect uh, as you kind of hunker down and get ready to go, uh, kind of stay on top of it for uh, an important stretch like you have coming up? Well, knock on wood, I hate to say this today, and then all of a sudden something changes. But so far, the last two weeks of th testing three days a week uh, and our team right now is in a 10-day quarantine where they're only at their apartment we've asked them not to let anybody else outside of the team come to their apartments uh, and they're only at the rink they're not anywhere else the tests have been clean up to this point hopefully we can maintain that quarantine we've talked about a couple things two goals going into the bubble prepared 
put number one before that goal, getting into the bubble, uh, into the pod, and, and making sure we're there. <laughs> that's 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 huge. Um, we've also used a word, and, and and we've talked about two things. We've talked about sacrifice. Yes, this is a sacrifice for everybody involved, but we've talked about how much work the league is doing, Josh is doing, the ads are doing, um, everybody's equipment manager, athletic trainer, the doctors, everything that they're doing. And I and I asked the guys, who are they doing this for? And they all said us. You know, so we have to do our part too because a lot of people are sacrificing to get them into the bubble. Uh, so, so we've talked about sacrifice, and then the word we've used pretty much daily is being thankful. Thankful we got the opportunity to practice, and hopefully thankful that we got the opportunity to play hockey when a lot of people might not be. So, we've really tried to focus on the positives that way and do everything we can to get into that bubble. Good stuff, Coach. Uh, Randy Johnson, Star Tribune. Yeah, hi, Brett. Um, All right. What have you seen out of VD Mietman so far? And he just got there. And what was the process of getting him over here? The process was, was uh, I got to give Nick Oliver a lot of credit. Nick was the day-to-day -day contact with VT, with, um, with uh, working on him, with the, with the visa, with school, all those other things, our academic people. Obviously, we got a little bit lucky this year where everything was online, where he could keep take all of his classes online while he was still there waiting on the visa appointment. But, boy, we thought we had him once. And then the visa appointment was all set up. They had a little COVID push in Finland. The visa appointment got shut down right when we thought we had them. Um, to be honest, it would, Nick Oliver just worked every single day. And I know VD and his family did as well. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, we were nervous. And uh, we were, it was a day-to-day -day game wondering what the news was gonna be. Uh, and finally, when he got here, it was a big sigh of relief. And uh, I know it's freeing Nick up to do a lot of other work now because he put so much time into that. but. We're just glad he got here. Uh, he's made a nice impression already right away. I mean, he can really shoot the puck. He's an attacking player that's got a really high end release. He scored some goals the first day in practice. Guys are looking around at each other like, holy cow, this kid can fire it. So I don't want to put, to put too much pressure on him early to score because it's a big jump to this league for, for any freshman. But uh, he's got that knack. And I, I think he's got, uh, he's got the ability to be a guy that can, can be a game changer. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Drew, back to you. Oh, you had two grad transfers coming in, Seamus Donahue and Jared Cockrell. Oh, what impact have they made so far? Obviously, in that inner squad scrimmage, Donahue handling the puck, shooting it a lot. Yeah. You know, what's been, I think what's really interesting about it is they both received votes for captain for two guys that have been here uh, a very short amount of time. Seamus ended up wearing the A. Uh, Cockrell got some votes, ended up not being in the mix. But they're, they're and what we, one big reason we recruited them for was their leadership and their maturity. Uh, we wanted to get older a little quicker. Uh, we wanted to find a forward that could play with the tenacity and replace a little bit of Nick Jack Paling type play. And we thought Cockrell brought that. He's a rat. Uh, he's on the puck. He, he's always, he's forcing the puck. Uh, he, he's kind of a rat out there that competes and has skill. And we, we wanted to, we wanted to fill that hole. And then we wanted to find a guy that could be a real mobile defenseman, a skating, moving, puck, mobile, puck-moving defenseman. And we thought Seamus Donahue fit that role really well, too. So I think, in my mind, we got really lucky. We got two great kids that fit into our culture here immediately and two guys that really help us kind of grow a little bit more, more mature quickly and also fill a couple holes that we really needed to fill. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Blake Thiessen, I hope I said that said. Said that correct? Go ahead. Tyson, like the boxer. Um, but, Coach, how important is it? Obviously, right now you guys have had tons of practice time. But once you get into the bubble or into the pod, how important is it to have a hot start just because if, you know, issues start or be persistent early on, you don't have as much practice time to kind of iron those things out? Yeah, you really don't. Obviously, we're really trying to get them to think short term because in that you know, in the pod, the bubble, whatever you want to call it, uh, sometimes a short memory is going to be important. You have a one bad game, you can't let it turn into two, right? So that quick mental turnaround where you can flush it, uh, get back to what you've been working on, get back to your foundation and try to get out and perform to, to a higher level. The next game is going to be really important. You're not going to be able to let things linger. Um, so we've really focused on that here, even day to day in practice is really focusing. Hey, if we had one, one day of practice that wasn't uh, to par, making sure we show up the next day and bring it to another level, a higher level, and, and and not let that day linger into the next. So it's been a little bit of a strategy from our coaching staff to try to keep things day to day, flush a bad day and build off the good days. Uh, because as you know, uh, playing that type of pro schedule, it's going to be a mental grind. 
But if we can fo have them show, focus on the short term, focus on the here and now, flush bad days, roll off the good days, I think, I think that's going to be such a huge part of the success uh, in the bubble. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Greg, Kajaki News, back to you. Coach, going back to VT a little bit, uh, what what has his, uh, what's the word, uh, integration to uh, college hockey and just playing in America in general been like both on ice and off ice being, you know, this is quite the, uh, quite the first experience he's going to get here. Yeah, and, and I keep talking to him about that because I want his, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but his first experience is different than it should ever be. Um, this first experience has him sitting in an apartment across the street and at the rink and not going anywhere else. You know, usually a, you walk across campus on a game day and the, the energy and life of a college campus and people fired up for the game and you see people out tailgating and you, you feel that energy build up all the time. You know, for him, he hasn't experienced that yet. So I'm trying to remind him that this is a little different, but he keeps telling me uh, the most important thing to him is he's fit in great with the guys and they've taken him under his wing. He feels very comfortable that way. Also got to keep in mind, he, you know, although he was doing his classes online, he still has a lot of catching up to do that way. Uh, he's get, been getting a lot of academic support. We want him to, by the time we leave here on Saturday, be caught up in all his classes. So that's not a stressor. On the rink, to be honest, he stepped in that first day after, you know, traveling from Finland uh, and, and stepped into practice. And like I said, scored some of the nicest goals in practice and looked like he'd been with us uh, for two months. So the transition so far on the rink has been, uh, very promising, uh, had a couple little dips, ups and downs here for sure, but he's handled them well. And I think that, you know, having Yami Cranola in the locker room a little bit, I think has helped him just from a standpoint of somebody that speaks his language, helping him through things a little bit. We've got him on the same line right now. I know that, that they both enjoy that. Um, but so far, you know, knock on wood, the transition has been really smooth for him. Thanks coach. Uh, Drew back to you. Uh, the decor, you got eight or nine guys back there that look like they can play right now. Usually that's kind of a bad thing with you can only have seven guys in the lineup every night. But with these amount of games, 10 games, in 20 days, how does that affect the decor? You're going to need everybody. That's the message to our guys right now. Even the guys that have found themselves maybe on a fifth line in practice or that extra D in practice when they come in and they see their name on the list. We're going to need everybody. Everybody's going to have to be ready. There's no way that uh, – you're going to be able to play four lines in the same 7D and one goalie. It's going to be a team effort. And I kind of like that. That keeps everybody in the mix. Everybody knows they're important. Everybody knows they bring value to this team. And if we're going to be successful, we're going to need everybody. That's usually a message around here anyway. We don't win individually at St. Cloud. We win as a group. And uh, I think you can really reinforce that message here in the pod because you know you truly are going to need every player uh, at one point or another. Thanks, Coach. Other questions for Coach Larson? Just one more. Um, Coach, it's your third year now in charge of this program. How have you seen maybe your fingerprints start to exude, you know, from the top to the bottom in this program that maybe weren't there in year one and year two? Well, it's been an interesting – it's been an interesting ride a little bit, maybe a little different than most, right? The first year I come in here, I walk in, I got the best team in the country, in my opinion, and I thought, wow, this coaching stuff's easy at the head coach level. These guys are, are pretty good. And then, you know, we lose 12 of them, and, and we've got 16 freshmen and sophomores last year. And uh, it was a totally – you know, there's a lot of pride in how that team handled themselves the, the first year, but obviously didn't end the way we wanted, but I'm still very proud of that group. And last year to see the growth and development when things look pretty bleak early and we're, you know, we're, you know, uh, losing, getting swept at home early and, and, and losing some games that we probably had a chance to win. And, and to see them, uh, you know, win some games against top five teams in the country down the stretch, have a winning record down the stretch, see that improvement. It was two totally polar opposite years. So I feel as a, as a, a two year head coach, I've learned a lot because uh, I've had to deal with two totally different situations. And now I think this year is going to be a little mix of both. I think the expectations are different. Are different. They're a little higher than they were last year. The players feel that. We feel that as a staff. Maybe not quite the expectations we had two years ago, but we're moving back up that ladder of a team. I love how Spence answered it. You know, you feel excited about being picked fourth in the league, top half of the league. That's usually a compliment in, in a lot of ways. Uh, but he said, no, not really. We, our goal is to chase those teams ahead of us. We want to start passing people. Uh, that's kind of our motto I think uh, uh, I think we see ourselves as maybe not the top team in the league right now or the top two teams 
but a team that wants to chase those two teams and try to pass them, two or three teams to try to pass them. Drew, you have another question? Oh, yeah. We've talked a lot about VD. Who are some other freshmen that have really stood out in camp? Well, it's an odd group because I don't know if we call Jared Cockrell and, and uh, Seamus Donahue freshmen. It feels like it. It's their first year here, uh, but they've been really good, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, we got a couple other guys. I, You know, Joe Molinar had has unfortunately had kind of an injury-riddled uh, junior career, but his talent level is stick. His playmaking ability has been, has been I think, you know, really good. And then he got a, a kind of a, a journeyman junior defenseman, Brady Zemer, who reminds me a lot of this John Lazat we had a couple of years ago here and the St. Cloud fans loved him. And I, I'm hoping Brady can fill those shoes one day. He's kind of that old school throwback, hard nosed defender that he doesn't care if he has a point all year, but he's going to block a lot of shots. He's going to kill a lot of penalties and, and he's going to be that go-to guy in really key defensive situations. So uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting group. Thanks coach. Other questions for coach. I almost forgot. Coach, what have you been watching on TV or movie-wise this extended break? What do you like? USHL hockey games on uh, hockey TV and North American League games on hockey TV. And, you know, uh, the most video recruiting I've ever done in my life because we can't go anywhere, Greg. Uh, I don't know if I've seen a TV show in two months. So uh, this virtual recruiting thing is new and something to get used to because uh, – well, if you guys saw, but they, they extended the recruiting dead period until April 15th. So we better get used to it. You're the only one that said that. That's uh, kudos to you there. <laughs> <laughs> New reality. Yeah. Uh, anything else before we let Coach go? I'm sure he's got plenty to get ready for. Going once, going twice. All right, Coach. Thank you very much for the time today. We'll see you uh, in Omaha here in a week. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks to all you guys, too. Appreciate everything. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being on the call. Thank you, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks to all the media for joining you guys, uh, joining me today. Hopefully, we'll see you guys uh, for all the sessions tomorrow. See you guys. Thanks so much, Mike. Yep.